So if you had a spacecraft traveling close to the speed of light, then distances shrink from your perspective. Have you ever wondered what really happens at the speed of light? The fastest motion in the universe. It is 299,792 kilometers per second, which isn't just fast. And they go around at 99.999999% of the speed of light. It's the absolute speed limit of the universe. Nothing with mass can ever reach it, and nothing can surpass it. Only light itself, made of massless photons, can move at that speed. It's a barrier built into the fabric of reality. But what if somehow we could break it? What if we could travel at the speed of light? What would happen to time, space, and even us? Let's find out. First, it's important to understand why light speed is so special. In the early 20th century, Albert Einstein revealed that space and time are not separate things. They are one interconnected entity called space-time. Every movement through space also means movement through time. When you move faster through space, you move slower through time. This relationship is what creates the bizarre effects we're about to explore. But before going that far, there's one unavoidable problem. Reaching the speed of light requires infinite energy. As an object with mass accelerates, it becomes heavier from the perspective of an outside observer. The closer it gets to light speed, the more energy it needs to keep accelerating. At 99.999999% of the speed of light, your mass would appear thousands of times greater than normal, and your energy demand would be unimaginable. That's why, for now, it's physically impossible. But let's imagine we've solved this. Humanity has developed a technology so advanced that energy is limitless. We build a ship that can accelerate to light speed safely. What happens when we take off? You might expect to feel some enormous rush or intense pressure, but surprisingly, you wouldn't feel anything. According to Galileo's principle of relativity, when you move at a constant velocity, no experiment can tell you that you're moving. You'd feel perfectly still inside your ship. There'd be no roaring wind, no shaking metal, just silence. Unless you looked out the window, you'd have no idea that you were moving at a speed faster than imagination. And that's not so strange when you realize that we're already moving through space at enormous speeds. The Earth spins at about 1,670 kilometers per hour at the equator. It orbits the Sun at 107,000 kilometers per hour. The Sun itself races through the Milky Way at 792,000 kilometers per hour, and our entire galaxy is plunging toward the Andromeda Galaxy at nearly 470,000 kilometers per hour, while the Milky Way itself is being pulled toward the mysterious Great Attractor at nearly 2 million kilometers per hour. Add it all up, and you're hurtling through the cosmos at more than 3.5 million kilometers per hour right now, and yet you feel nothing. If the Earth suddenly stopped spinning, though, we'd all notice. In an instant, every object not bolted to the ground would continue moving at over 1,000 kilometers per hour. Oceans would sweep across continents, buildings would collapse, and the air itself would become a deadly wall of force. That's inertia. The same force you'd have to overcome to accelerate gradually to light speed without turning into paste. So let's say our ship has solved that too. We have perfect inertial dampeners and infinite energy. The engines ignite. Over the course of a year, we accelerate until we're moving at nearly 300,000 kilometers per second. What happens to the world around us? Space changes, time changes, even light itself begins to twist. At such speeds, everything ahead of you starts to blue shift. The wavelengths of incoming light compress, turning visible colors into ultraviolet and x-rays. Stars ahead of you begin to glow with a ghostly blue intensity, while everything behind you stretches into long red trails, eventually fading into darkness. This is called the relativistic Doppler effect. At the same time, your entire field of vision begins to shrink. Instead of seeing stars all around you, your view narrows into a bright tunnel directly in front of the ship. It's called relativistic aberration. Space seems to collapse into a narrow cone. The universe stretches and folds around you, as if you're flying into a funnel of light. But there's something even more mind-bending happening. Time dilation. Time for you slows down relative to everyone who stays behind. The faster you go, the slower your clock ticks. At 99% of the speed of light, time for you passes seven times slower. At 99.9999% comma, it passes thousands of times slower. 
Let's imagine a real example. You travel at 99.9999% the speed of light for nine and a half months, according to your ship's clock. You experience it as normal days, meals, and sleep cycles. But when you return to Earth, 56 years have passed. Your friends have aged half a lifetime. Maybe the cities you remember have changed. The people you knew are gone, and your world has moved on. That's not science fiction. It's a measurable and proven consequence of relativity. In fact, scientists have confirmed it using atomic clocks on planes and satellites. Clocks on fast-moving aircraft tick more slowly than those on the ground. The difference is tiny, but real. Now, let's consider the practical side. Even if we could build a ship fast enough, there's another problem. Space itself isn't empty. There are hydrogen atoms, bits of dust, and stray particles floating everywhere. At low speeds, they're harmless. But at near light speeds, they become bullets carrying enough energy to vaporize matter on impact. Each hydrogen atom hitting the front of your ship would deliver radiation levels thousands of times higher than the lethal limit for humans. According to research from Johns Hopkins University, even with a 10 centimeter thick aluminum shield, less than 1% of that radiation would be stopped. The rest would pass through, frying electronics and living tissue alike. The only way to survive would be to build an incredibly dense, massive barrier, which would itself require even more energy to move. The faster you go, the more dangerous each atom becomes. Interstellar dust is another killer. At light speed, a single speck of dust the size of a grain of sand would hit with the energy of an explosive shell. After only a few minutes of travel, the ship's surface would be pitted and melted. After hours, it would be shredded. That's why the practical limit for safe human travel may be only 10% of light speed, still incredibly fast, but survivable. At that rate, a ship could reach Proxima Centauri, our nearest star, in about 40 years. That's still within one lifetime. But let's go further. Suppose we have perfect shielding, a flawless ship, and technology to handle radiation and dust. We reach light speed. What now? At that instant, from our point of view, something extraordinary happens. Time outside the ship stops. The universe freezes. To an observer, watching from Earth though, the opposite occurs. Time inside the ship freezes. You become a beam of light, moving but unaging, frozen in motion. For the traveler, distances shrink. What was once four light years becomes, from your perspective, almost nothing. Space itself contracts in the direction of your motion. You could cross the entire Milky Way in what feels like seconds, while for the rest of the universe, hundreds of thousands of years pass. That's the great paradox of light speed travel. For the traveler, it's instantaneous. For everyone else, it's eternity. The journey becomes a one-way trip to the far future. By the time you return, if you ever could, your world would be ancient history. Imagine leaving Earth today and returning only moments later from your point of view, only to find that human civilization is gone. The continents have shifted, the oceans have changed, and maybe a new species rules the planet. Light speed travel affects both space and time. And yet, even if we could never survive such a trip, the idea changes how we see the universe. Every particle of light you see left its source ages ago. The sunlight hitting your face began its journey eight minutes earlier. Light from Alpha Centauri began over four years ago. Glokes from distant galaxies has been traveling for billions of years. When you look into the night sky, you're looking through time itself. So perhaps traveling at light speed isn't about going faster. It's about understanding how deeply time and space are connected. Every movement through one changes the other. Every acceleration bends reality just a little more. For now, our ships crawl compared to light. But one day, with discoveries beyond our imagination, humanity might find a way to reach the stars, not by breaking the laws of physics, but by learning to bend them. When that day comes, we'll no longer just look up at the stars. We'll sail among them, leaving trails of light across the endless dark. And the dream of touching the speed of light will finally belong not to science fiction, but to us. Until then, we remain explorers, gazing into the light of the universe and dreaming of what lies beyond.